Hello friends, this video on evolution part 7 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let us look at the next evidence. As I said, this evidence is from England on population of moths. So moths are those insects which uh, to some extent resemble the butterflies. So it was seen, this is like a story. Now it was seen in some place in England in around 1850s that the population of the moths changed over a period of time. Now, before industrialization came in, that means before the industry set up and so much of industrialization had happened, that time the population of moths were little different. But post-industrialization, it became just the opposite. So that, is, that has also acted as an evidence for evolution. So let us see what had happened. The pre-industrialization in a particular area in England it was found that the white-winged moths had bigger population than the dark-winged moths. Now there were two varieties of moths which were seen that time but more widespread was the white-winged, the moths which had white wing and it was seen that there were very few moths with dark wing. So somewhat like this and generally these moths are found on the tree barks. So more of the white winged moths were present. So these were more prevalent when compared to the dark winged moths. So here you see they are white winged and here it is dark winged. Now what happened pre-industrializing? But later, post-industrialization, the scenario became just the opposite. So after industrialization, it was seen that the population of the dark-winged moths was larger when compared to the white-winged moths. So the question was, how did industrialization affect the population of the moths? So how come the dark-winged moths increased in number and the white-winged moths decreased in number? So what went wrong? Now what happened was pre-industrialization, before industrialization came into picture, so there was not much of pollution, so there were no suit from the industries and also there were white growth of lichens all over the tree trunks. So on the tree trunks we could see the lichen. Lichen is nothing but the mutual or symbiotic association between the fungi and the algae. Now due to the presence of those white uh, white layer you can say the tree bark used to be lighter in color now when the bark was lighter in color it used to happen that the white colored moths were less visible on them so if you see this moth is less visible when compared to this one so this is a dark moth so which is the contrast color when compared to the background which is almost white due to the presence of lichen so what happened these became easier for the predators so whenever predators came for their prey for example the bats or the owls were one of the predators which used to feed on the moths so whenever the owl came in search of a prey it was easier for the owl to find out the brown winged moth because it was clearly visible but the white winged moth because it, it had the same color as that of the background it was difficult for the owl to find out a white winged moth so what, hap what happened most of the time the brown winged moth was being caught and it was being eaten up by the owl so as a result the population of the brown winged moths reduced and as a result the population of the white winged moths relatively increased and therefore the white winged moths had a bigger population when compared to the dark winged moths because the survival rate of the white winged moths was greater than that of the dark winged moths. Now the situation changed, it became just the opposite post industrialization. After industrialization, what happened was that due to pollution and also there was no lichen growth in presence of the industries. So as a result, due to pollution and all, the tree barks became darker. So the trunks were now darker in color. So as a result, the brown winged moth now was almost uh, like of the same color as that of the background. So it was difficult to find out a brown winged moth, but the white moth became very much noticeable. So it could be easily caught by the predator. So now when the owl came in search of a prey, it could easily spot a white white winged moth but the brown winged moth was not caught because it was not distinctly seen. So as a result the owl started preying on the white winged moth therefore the population of the white winged moths reduced and as a result the population of the brown winged moth increased. 
So here you can see that as a result of industrialization, now what, why is there a change in the population? So now if you see from the white winged moth with a, over a period of time, with the passage of time, the white winged moth vanished out because after industrialization they were all eaten up so gradually their population kept on decreasing and the brown winged moth kept on increasing so in a way you can say that brown winged moth they evolved from the white winged moth so white winged moth was the past so it, it is like it will become extinct but the brown winged moth will be there so this is also an example or this is also an evidence which talks about evolution which tells that there can be many different variety of organisms living at the same time but there can be many different environmental factors environmental factors or uh, the predators can also be a cause so there can be many different causes because of which some of the organisms continue to survive some of the organisms uh, they are uh, they just get lost so they just die off and they become extinct so this is another example of evaluation not example this is another uh, evidence which talks about evolution so this is how also new organisms can evolve so here you can see the brown winged moth evolved because earlier white winged moth was more prevalent but due to different scenarios or due to under a special situation the brown winged moth became more prevalent. So now the last one is the evidence of resistant variety of organisms. Now I am sure that many of you would have seen the insect repellent, cockroach repellent or the mosquito repellent which you commonly use in your house in order to get rid of cockroaches and mosquitoes. You would have also seen or heard of the insecticides and the pesticides which are normally sprayed in the farms to uh, kill the insects and the pests. Now what happens? Why, why does it happen that when you spray it, the insects or the pests, they all die? That's because as soon as it is sprayed, they are not resist, their body is not resistant to those uh, chemicals. And as a result, it, it spoils the, their uh, entire balance of the body and they die. So that is what normally happens. But if you start using pesticides in an excessive amount, if repeatedly you keep using these kind of pesticides, sometimes what happens is that some resistant variety of organisms evolve. So some such organisms, one or two might come up, which become resistant with those sprays. So let us suppose that these are the bugs and you want to get rid of these bugs. So you use a spray. Now as soon as you give the spray, so most of them die. So more than 90% of them die except for one. So the one survives. Now why did this one survive? That's because this particular bug is resistant to this pesticide. Now why it became resistant? Now that can be due to many reasons. It might be possible that some mutation, some genetic mutation has happened and as a result it has developed resistant, resistance against the spray. It is also possible that it is, uh, it is just a matter of chance that by chance it this one did not die and it could actually adjust with the spray. So whatever the reason may be, the basic cause is that this particular bug is resistant to this spray and it survived. So that means even if you spray this, uh, this particular pesticide on it, it is not going to die at any cost because it is resistant to it. Now what will happen? This particular insect can will again reproduce and it will give birth to its offsprings. Right? Like as we have studied in genetics, so th there are chances that this, this particular insect is going to transfer or it is going to send or transmit the same thing into his offsprings. Now as a result, over a period of time, maybe it will produce one or two more insects which will be resistant to this particular spray. Again, those insects will reproduce, so they might also produce one or two insects which will be resistant. Now over a period of time, we will see that a lot of insects have been produced which are resistant to this spray. So this resistant variety organisms are produced as a result of what? It is produced as a result of evolution that's because initially the insects which used to be there they were not resistant to the spray they used to die when this was sprayed but due to some reason one particular insect was formed which was resistant to the spray and then over a period of time that particular insect gave rise to multiple other insects so this type of evolution which is caused by human is known as anthropogenic 
evolution. So here you can see that resistant organisms will appear over months or years. Now again, as I said, it is not necessary that it will take millions of years for this resistant variety of organisms to be produced. Generally, these insects have got shorter lifespan. Now when they have shorter lifespan, what happens? So one insect lives its entire lifespan and meanwhile it produces a lot, it reproduces and a lot of new insects are produced right now in this case now these resistant organisms which are being produced they are produced over months or maximum over years so over the years itself you can actually see that new resistant variety of organisms are being produced that means evolution is taking place evolution is continuously happening so it doesn't take centuries to take to see resistant organisms so over small period of time only you can see these new variety of organisms now it generally happens due to excessive use of insecticides or pesticides against some specific organisms or insects so this type of evolution is termed as anthropogenic evolution now what is the meaning of anthrop so anthropogenic this means something which is caused by humans or caused by human activity so here if you see what is the human activity the use of the insecticides or this pesticides so when you use these insecticides or pesticides in excess only then these kind of uh, resistant variety formation take place so that is why this evolution is called anthropogenic action. So in this section, we saw that there are quite a few evidences which tell us that evolution happens and evolution happens continuously. This uh, resistant variety of organisms being produced over a couple of months or years that shows that proves it because these kind of organisms were not there before. So a new type of organisms are being produced from the existing organisms. So that is one. Next is looking at the morphology and anatomy, you can see that there are many structures in, in different types of organisms which are exactly similar in structure or exactly similar in function, which shows that there is some link between those organisms. That is, they might share some common ancestor and that is how we can say that evolution is happening. That means from the same ancestor, so many varieties of organisms have been formed. So that is evolution. We, get, we also saw that with regarding the moths evidence, we saw that earlier there, there were mostly white winged moths and suddenly over a period of time we could see the, uh, the dark colored wings moths and that was also a result of evolution. So all these examples and also the fossils. So all these examples together tell that evolution is not a hypothetical or an imaginary concept. It is something which is actually happening and it is happening continuously. So even now evolution is taking place. It has not stopped. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for an easy four-step learning process absolutely free of cost. Watch video lessons, ask questions, refer notes, and take an online test. Thank you once again.